Linguistics is not a sexy field. It's unlikely you'll win international renown for your research. There will be no Nobel Prize. But discoveries made in this field can change the way we see the world. And so I'd like to take some time to highlight the men and women who have made lasting contributions to linguistics and thus to human knowledge. This week, I'd like to talk about Alice Kober, an assistant professor of classics at Brooklyn College during the 1930s and 40s, and a formidable intellect at a time when she would have been barred from employment at the major institutions in the nation because she was a woman. It is because of Alice Kober's research that Linear B was deciphered. A quick introduction for those of you not familiar with Linear B. Linear B is a writing system that was discovered at Knossos Crete in 1900 by Arthur Evans and eluded decipherment for the next 50 years. The Linear B script predates the Greek alphabet by centuries, but does in fact write a f an earlier form of Greek, though this was not known when Kober began her research. In fact, very little was known when Kober began her research. It was known that it was a syllabary, which means that each character contained a consonant and a vowel, and that there were also logographic or pictorial symbols. Though around 2,000 inscriptions were found at Knossos, only 200 were available to researchers. So Kober had very little to work with. She absolutely refused to entertain ideas of what language might be represented by the script, and what s sound qualities the characters might have. Her attitude was that the script was all that remained, and so that is all that she would deal with. She had to balance her time-consuming research with a full course load of teaching, along with learning as many languages as she could, uh, including ones as disparate as Old Irish and Chinese, just in case any of these might hold a clue that could help her unlock Linear B. Alice Kober's research is what made the decipherment of Linear B possible. She made three major discoveries that unlocked the locked room mystery that was Linear B. First, she discovered that Linear B is represents an inflected language. So the endings would change based on use, much like verbs in Spanish or both nouns and verbs in Latin. Finding inflection in a syllabary is an incredible discovery because, like I said earlier, each character is a consonant and a vowel. And if you don't know what consonant and what vowel, then you don't know if a change in symbol represents a change in a vowel sound or a change in a consonant, or a change in a word. Second, she made what she referred to as a slight discovery that was far more important than she gave it credit. A certain character, known as the button, appeared in the same environment every time, at the end of the second of a pair of words. And she hypothesized correctly that this meant and, similar to uh, the use of que in Latin in a phrase like senatus populisque Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. Third, she figured out the genders of the logographic symbols for, for animals. It was widely hypothesized that one that similar symbols meant one meant male, one meant female of, say, sheep. Uh, but no one was able to figure out which was which, and Kober did. And as a part of that discovery, she was able to realize that at the bottom of a lot of these inscriptions, there would be a word that was widely thought to mean total, so the total number of sheep at Knossos. But it was in different forms based on which symbol was at the top. So if it was the total number of rams, she realized that that was the masculine form. And if it was the total number of ewes, then it was the feminine form. 
Sadly, Alice Kober passed away in 1950, before seeing her work to its conclusion. And in 1952, Michael Ventris was able to finally decipher the Linear B script. But he could not have done it without Alice Kober's contribution. Questions, comments, concerns, confusions? Leave them below. Thanks for letting me share a word with you.